you are asking is, I mean, an easy question and a very tough question because how do you define yourself? You know, there are so many facets to it. So there is one facet of, of mine which is very obvious and that is the, the passion and obsession with medicine, taking care of people and the best possible way in the world. So this is one aspect of me. And the idea being that when you want to be associated with a profession which is dealing with human life, when people come to you, they are coming in a compromised state. So that means that they are already vulnerable. That puts extra responsibility on us because they have a disease, they are psychologically very uh, sort of upset or you can say uh, thrown off. They are anxious, one about their whether they'll be well again or not, what will happen to them, what procedure will happen, how much is going to cost, what's going to happen to your family. So there are many, many aspects which you have to deal with when you are dealing in this profession. It's where you have a family, you have a responsibility and you have compromised so many things. And that's where the difficult part starts. So when you are so passionate and obsessed about doing a good job or the best in the world, you keep running, that's one part, but you, it does not come without a cost. It, you have to pay a price. And the price I paid was that I shortchanged my family for time and attention when the children were going up. So I, my wife fortunately was, was is a strong person, a great mother, so she took care of the family. So there was a synergistic relationship, but, but like I said, I missed that part of it. And that's how you say, how do you define a human being? You must define the totality of it. But the totality of it comes as all said and done. I consider myself blessed in my profession, blessed by my family, and basically a very happy and content individual that's what I am. So from the very beginning, you know, if you, I was born one year before partition. In fact, I was born on the 12th of August, 1946. And so my family, my parents are both doctors. They were living in Pakistan. And then overnight, they had to leave. And they came empty handed. So they got in settlement a three-room flat in Connaught Place where my parents used to practice in one room each and we used to live in one room. That is my father, mother, my sister and myself. So we were, it was like a sort of a crowded but a very pleasant experience living there. And that exposed me to patients coming in to see my mother who was a gynecologist, you know, babies being delivered, all this stuff. And my father was an ENT surgeon and all these people used to come in pain and all that and leave smiling. So I'm sure that made a big impression on my mind that medicine actually related to society, to people in a very positive way. Then I used to love to work with my hands and create things. I was always into Meccano, Meccano's watch is Lego now. I used to be aero modeling, creating planes out of balsa wood blocks. So there was a whole lot of thing that went in for my working with hands and, in, and I was a good sportsman. I was on every team so that I had unlimited stamina. So I think all these things culminated into a later life. But so that, that leapfrog. But then I, I went to medical school and over there I felt the frustration of medicine. And then when I went to the US and became a surgeon, joined the surgical, that's when I realized the value of what I had been doing. As a surgeon, you leave, need unlimited stamina, which I had. I was ambidextrous because by, by accident, I was born a left-handed, but in those days, left-handed was considered unlucky. So my tutor used to break my knuckles to convert my, me to the right-handed. My handwriting went to pot, but and that time I was very unhappy. But when I went to this operating room, I realized it took me half the time to do the surgery because I'll just switch hands and then start stitching with my left hand. So this was an asset which was given to me by that tutor. So when I came back visiting India, I took him huge number of gifts to thank him 
for making me special so you know how things work together to actually bring you to a spot so i don't think anybody it's a journey which is matched to your thought or soch as you can say it is my moral responsibility because thousands of patients were coming from india to us to new york to me to operate them on an average 2 300 patients used to come every every year and i knew that for everyone that came there were thousands who couldn't come so if that was the case why it was an opportunity in one way and my moral obligation in another to create that facility in india where we could train our own doctors we could do our own research and we could treat our patients at one tenth the cost that's when my journey started and i did escort heart institute and into and made it into a very successful place so the realization came to me that india was not called india because we did not have that uh, what we call master of your own destiny so i thought we had to create our own center our own harvard mayo cleveland so this is medanta now that i said it must have the best facilities facilities means for patient care but also for research teaching development molecular biology so that we could then become an institution which could develop new things second was that it must have technology as greater than anybody else or as good as anybody in the world third it must have the human capital which is exceptional which is benchmarked around the world not locally jaise andon mein kana raja nahi raja chahiye har har discipline ka and fortunately all these three things came together and my vision was and is or my my actually it's my junoon to say that we will create the new medicine out of india which will be a combination of modern medicine and traditional indian medicine that is ayurveda so we have done a lot of research now so i wake up in the morning i will exercise <clears throat> I will also three times a week do yoga. Get ready, come to work, and then I'm here twelve hours. But the work is so stimulating and consuming, so you don't feel it, right? So the thing is that if your thought process is positive, devoid of greed, arrogance, and jealousy, greed, arrogance, and jealousy is a triad which will destroy a human being. so if you if that those things don't enter your mind and you are always doing some positive work you don't feel tired because you get the energy from what you're doing i find the most magical is vipassana actually is breathing exercise which actually put you in, puts you into a sort of a meditative state and it takes 10 minutes for me and i do it on my way home in the car and i i wake up from it like a new person so that the whole stress of the day is wiped out No, but that's that's the beauty. The more complicated the case, the more it, it, it stimulates you, it excites you. So, by nature of my profession and the fact that I started cardiac surgery at the earliest stage of life, I've been through the. I, nobody knows mo- more about coronary artery disease and its complexities than I do because I've practiced. I've done more surgeries than I think anybody in the world. So the point is that with all that experience, with all. every day doing new developments the more complicated the case and we by nature of my seniority a lot of complicated cases come to me which have been turned down by everybody the more it is stimulating and and encouraging to go and tackle more and more and help more and more people who otherwise had no hope that hard work does not kill people long hours don't pay it's the way you actually take it in and interact with your environment that that is terrible so if you are indulging in positive activity which makes you happy and satisfied inside and gratification you don't even feel the time going by if you are in activity which is non productive by way of any meaningful thing then 
it has a limited value so how long can you think about money how long can you think about you know you know doing certain things but you can see you see professions like ours professions like journalism professions like uh, even to great degree lawyers they get involved they don't get tired they keep working they keep working because it's it's creative it's dealing to leading to society's benefit somehow or the other as i said you know today there is more and more desire to live healthy the as the economic conditions of yours and your environment improves the next thing you want is you want to live and you want to live healthier so that you're not dragging after the age of 50 getting sicker and sicker so the desire is there now the desire has to be convert, converted into an actual plan so that you can have that discipline in you so we are saying the simple principles eat fat fried sweet less the least so what you like the most you eat the least it's an unfortunate thing then comes things like meats poultry and all that in the next proportion not too much then we go fruits and vegetables in as much quantity as you want avoid sweet fruits which are rich rich in sugar like mango like melon but other fruits are good then we have beyond that you need carbohydrates as a fuel for your body so carbohydrates like sugar rice potatoes these are bad carbohydrates if you take multi grain bread you take uh, uh, you know raw sugar you complex carbohydrates are okay so that's why if you keep this in mind you can eat everything you don't have to eat fried food in large quantities but small quantities fine and then once you've eaten the food you must do justice to it and that means that you must consume it and how you consume is the balance between the two so if you are eating a lot and you're putting on weight it's like a bank balance if you're putting on weight then you're hurting yourself you must have a weighing scale you weigh yourself regularly to make sure you're not putting on weight because once you put on weight very difficult to get rid of it second the exercise that you do is proportional minimum 30 minutes to 40 minutes a day of brisk walk is at least minimum it will keep your circulations or what we call cardiovascular system actually in good shape we all have stress we all have to deal with it but we need to learn techniques to deal with it and the the, the way to de- deal as i said was you do meditation yoga vipassana these are things that help help you regularly then of course there's music there are movies there's family time there's sports there is outdoors so if you include all these things in good, some proportion i think you can do the best for your life and stay as healthy and hopefully lo- live longer healthier